Hello and welcome to the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. And today we're going to talk about how the Los Angeles Chargers can win Super Bowl 52. And I have to remember to say Los Angeles, Los Angeles, LA, LA, as I am still not used to calling this team the Los Angeles Chargers. I really want to call them the San Diego Chargers, but. I will try my best to keep calling them the L.A. Chargers. Blech. But with that said, let's talk about the L.A. Chargers and how they can win Super Bowl 52. And in case you haven't been watching, I talked about the Bears and the Jags and, you know, the, the, the Browns and the 49ers, you know, and I really had to stretch. But now we're entering the range where... Hey, this could happen now. Raise an eyebrow. Say, this team could actually win. We're not talking about the Browns, the 49ers anymore, the Bears. We're talking about some potential contenders. And we're going to start with the L.A. Chargers. Three keys for the Chargers to go to Super Bowl 52 and win it. And let's start with key number one. They have to stay healthy. What a problem this has been for the L.A. Chargers the last two years. I guess they've been the San Diego Chargers for the past two years. They have not been able to stay healthy. Last year, 23 players on injured reserve by the end of the season, containing some very key players for this football team. Guys like Jason Verrett. Guys like Brandon Flowers. Guys like Brandon Meebane. Guys like Sean Lissamore. Guys all over the injured reserve that were huge. Oh, how could I forget Keenan Allen? I mean, the list just goes on and on and on of integral players for this football team ending up on injured reserve last season. And of the ones that did play, you know, still some guys miss some games. Guys like Travis Benjamin miss some games. So the Chargers, man, they just have to stay healthy. And that doesn't mean you have to go through the entire season without having one player on injured reserve. I'm not saying that, but... Keep it to under 10. By the end of the season, I want to see maybe 10 max, 9, maybe 8 players on injured reserve. I don't want to see 23 like I saw last season. Or if you must get injured, hopefully there are guys lower on the depth chart. Okay, no Phillip Rivers, no Melvin Gordons, no Jason Verrett, no Keenan Allen. Okay, because we really got to get Jason Verrett and Keenan Allen on that damn football field and staying on that damn football field. I know a lot of y'all Charger fans for some reason are ready to move on from Keenan Allen. And I get it, right? He hasn't been healthy. That's been frustrating. And you like Mike Williams, right? I'm not a big Mike Williams fan. But to me, I think we can agree on this. Best case scenario, you have both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, okay, for Phillip Rivers to throw to. So that is key number one. Key number two, speaking of Phillip Rivers, he has to keep the turnovers down. Last year, 21 interceptions for Phillip Rivers and fumbles, I want to say it was over five fumbles on the year, too many, okay? The interception number must go down. In order to win the Super Bowl, I'd say I want under 15. That's what I'd prefer, at least under 18. 21, way too much. And we can blame a bunch of different parties for this high interception number this year. You look at the receiving core. Okay, it wasn't great last year because of the injuries. Tyrell Williams ended up being the best wide receiver on this roster. Travis Benjamin being a nice deep threat, but nothing more than that. And some other guys as well. Dontrell Inman, who has trouble getting open from time to time as well. They couldn't catch all the time. Sometimes they'd run the wrong routes and there'd be interceptions there. Also, you look at the offensive line, okay? Phillip Rivers was sacked 36 times last year, way too many. He had to throw the ball away sometimes. Sometimes he threw it out of bounds. Sometimes he'd just throw it up and hope that one of his receivers would get it, and they did. You know, you hope Mike Williams would help with that category, but Phillip Rivers has to be better because I even saw a statistic the other day that Phillip Rivers had the most throwaways out of bounds last year, so... Even though he did throw it up for grabs a lot, a lot of times he also threw it out of bounds. So they just have to have a more cohesive and efficient passing offense in L.A. than they had last season. Cut down on the interceptions, increase the completion percentage if you can, get some more easier throws for them. Maybe throw to your new running backs, receiving backs, or something like that. Get some more easy throws. I mean, now your wide receiving core is so stacked, right? Get Keenan Allen out there, damn it, and throw some nice passes to him. Let's increase the completion percentage and let's decrease the interceptions and the turnovers they must go down for this Chargers offense to succeed and lead them to a Super Bowl that's key number two 
And key number three, it's time for the defense to become elite, baby. And man, it is on its way. Last year, the Chargers selected Joey Bosa with the third overall pick. I know back then, everyone was, you know, starting to be low on Joey Bosa, starting to criticize Joey Bosa. Oh, he's not that good. He only had like eight sacks last year. I was the one saying, hey, he's the number one player on my big board. I have him over everybody. I have him over Jalen Ramsey. I have him over Ezekiel Elliott. I have him over Carson Wentz. He's my number one. And he's proven, I think, to be the number one. I think he's better than Elliott and Ramsey were last year. That's just my opinion. But if you come in and you get how many sacks did he have? 10, 11, 12 sacks in, in like 12 games that he played? I'm impressed, and Joey Bosa is only getting started, baby. My goodness, Joey Bosa, an absolute beast. So with that said, you have him. You have Melvin Ingram opposite of him. He's coming back under the franchise tag. Hopefully, he can earn a long-term deal this season. Still has some depth at the outside linebacker position in Cal Emanuel. And I want to say Jeremiah Tauchu. Now, last year, I think he ended up on injured reserve, so he needs to stay healthy. But he's some nice pass rushing depth to have. Man, the defensive line, Brandon Meebane, he needs to stay on the field. Last year, ended up on injured reserve, but he stays on the field. He's a damn good nose tackle. You're starting to see this Chargers defense forming nicely. You look at the secondary again. We need to see Jason Verrett stay healthy. When he's healthy, we know what he can do. He played very well in the 2014, very well in 2015, 2016, injured for, if not most of the season, all of the season, okay? Way too much. He has to stay healthy. He has to be good. Look at the secondary beyond the cornerbacks, the safeties. Right now, I'm not in love with the safeties, but they can still be good. You still have Dwight Lowry and Jaleel Adai. Now, you currently drafted Desmond uh, Desmond King out of Iowa. I want to say in the fourth or fifth round, he could come in and compete for that job. You also drafted Rayshon Jenkins, the safety out of Miami. Now, I like King more than Jenkins. Jenkins isn't great to me, but hey, one of them, hopefully, can solidify themselves as a starter by midseason or late season or maybe in seasons past, but we're talking about this season, so Hopefully one of them can for this season. That way you can go to Super Bowl 52 and win it. But I think this defense is close to becoming legit. The inside linebackers, how, how could I forget about them? Denzel Perriman. Last year he drafted Jatavis Brown, who did really well. Short guy, but man, that guy's tough. Yeah, I like how this Chargers defense is forming, man. They lost Manti Teo and uh, some other pieces as well, but I like the way this Chargers defense is forming. Now, I would have preferred, personally, if they would have invested a higher draft pick in the defense. I mean, you're sitting at number seven overall. I thought you should have took a Jonathan Allen or Malik Hooker, who, yes, fell all the way down to the middle of the first round, but they're going to be great. I mean, Allen may only be great for six years, so I understand why you pass on him, but Malik Hooker, Man, that hurts to me because here, here's my argument again, and I've made this argument so many times. I think Charger fans are getting sick of me making this argument. I'm not sure how much value Mike Williams adds to your team. I just don't see it. Uh, Malik Cooker, that adds value because he's so much better than the alternative, Dwight Lowry, to where you say, okay, our team's going to freaking improve. Mike Williams, is he that much better than Tyrell Williams to where you're like, okay, now our team's really going to improve? I say no. So that's something that I would have done, and that would make me feel better about the Chargers' chances. But hey, I mean, looking at this team right now, as long as they stay healthy, and as long as Anthony Lynn, the new head coach, can come in, have a nice system, nice scheme, nice strategy to tackle this 2016, sorry, 2017 season, and can look to sneak up on some teams in the AFC West, battle their tough schedule, and man, it is tough. This LA Chargers team can be on its way to Super Bowl 52 because you still have Phillip Rivers at the helm. And as long as he doesn't regress, this is a man that I fear. And yes, he hasn't done anything in the playoffs, but it only takes one time, man. It only takes one magical run before we're talking about Phillip Rivers being a Super Bowl champion. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the LA Chargers and how they can win Super Bowl 52. What are your thoughts on this video? Comment down below. I want to know. Also, what is my official prediction for the Chargers this season? You're going to have to stick around and subscribe to that as I'll talk about the Chargers in August, giving you my season preview for the Chargers and my official season prediction. And throughout the season, I'll be recapping some of the Charger games. So there you go again. Those are my thoughts. What are yours? Comment down below. I want to know. And until next time, this has been the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment.
and I'm out. Peace.